Hey everyone, and welcome to the latest session of Exploring 3D Experience Works. My name is Gian Calisi, here as always with John Martirano. We're a couple of industry process consultants here in Waltham, Massachusetts on a beautiful day. Nice to be back here in the office again. And we have a great presentation for you, but before we get into that, just wanna let you know if you have any questions, comments um, at all throughout, the ch throughout this stream, uh, put them right in the chat. So we recommend viewing this uh, in not in full screen so that you can see that chat panel and interact with us uh, throughout the uh, presentation. So we're going to be asking you some questions and whatnot. So definitely don't be afraid to throw anything out there. It looks like we already have a few people joining. Hey, Mike, Sandy, Jan, Kelvin, Mike Jeremy, Puckett. Bravo. Yeah, Mike Puckett. We got a lot of folks already Michael on Steve. here. Great to see you. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm sure most of you have been here before, have been with us and, and seen some other great presentations. Uh, but for those who, of you who haven't, then you probably are wondering, uh, what is 3D Experience Works? Well, 3D Experience Works is our growing portfolio of tools and products from uh, all different brands that are a part of the Dassault Systems family. Uh, so all of these different brands provide different apps, different products that help kind of fill the different gaps and different areas of the product development process. So this right here, what you see on screen, this is 3D Experience Works and all of the products inside it. And here's what that product development process looks like from a high level. It's planning, developing, and releasing the products that, that you're trying to create and sell. So these different uh, areas of the 3D Experience Works portfolio, they all kind of trickle into different areas of this process. And they all have specialized um, functionality and features specific to that process. But today we're gonna be focusing on a, on a couple products that are actually they have a lot of value. They bring a ton of value and benefits to the table in really all processes, all areas of this process. So planning, developing, and releasing, you know, you're going to need to keep an ongoing schedule of your project. You're going to have team meetings all the time. And that's what we're focusing on today is lean team player um, offered by the Delmia brand and project planner from Inovia. So Lean Team Player is ba it's a it's a tool based on Lean principles, um, and this was actually you know the Lean DNA is built into this tool because it's actually from the shop floor, right from a production floor where most shops that practice these Lean principles will have these whiteboards uh, with all different kinds of post-it notes or different ways of organizing processes, ideas, thoughts, and notes. And that's kind of a little preview you can see up there in the top right corner. You see that view of a, of a board that has all those post-it notes. And then project planners for more of your very structured um, tasks and task burn down as you are going through the different phases of your project, hitting those milestones. It's kind of like the next step to add more structure to your ongoing operations and, and projects. So to summarize quickly what you're gonna see today um, with these two products, you're gonna see how we can use them to quickly create really engaging agendas and visual boards that help boost focus and make your team meetings more productive all around. You're also gonna see how, how this can help stimulate your team's creativity by having access to collaborate digitally in real time on these, on these very visual boards. And then finally, how you can organize actions, owners, and timelines with one single source of truth so that everybody knows exactly what their tasks are, you know, when they have to be completed, what resources are needed. But I think I've done enough talking. I want to turn it over to Brian. But before I do, I just want to let you know that I think we're going to start off just by talking about kind of the good, the bad, and the ugly of team meetings. So if you've been in a team meeting that you're like, oh, I hate this meeting. Tell us why. Throw it in the chat. You know, let us know what are some of your bad experiences of team meetings and maybe what are some of your good experiences? Like what are what made a meeting so good that you walked away from the table feeling more confident than ever in the progress of your project or whatever it might be? So throw those ideas in the chat and Brian, welcome. It's great to have you here and I'm excited to see what you have planned for today. Thanks, John. You did a great job setting that up. Hey, John. Hey, everyone. Thanks for being Thanks, here. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, hear you great. Yeah. 
All right, sweet. Well, let's not waste any time. Of course, that's a big principle in Lean. So I've brought a story to tell you today, a demo, if you will, but I'd like to have a discussion and really talk about good, bad, ugly of team meetings because sure, there's a tool set. We'll see the demo of that today, but so much of what makes a team effective and, and meetings effective is the leader. Are they preparing? Are they facilitating? Are they following up the meeting? So I've brought a couple items to show and tell today over here. I have my iPad, so we'll be talking about you know any device with all these tools. And then a couple of books that I highly recommend. Uh, one is a short read, Bad Meetings Happen to Good People. I'll be referencing this a little bit. Lean thinking. You know, like Gian mentioned, the heritage of the lean team player role is the Delmia brand, manufacturing shop floor flash five stand-up meetings. But if you think about being focused and driving the the whole team towards a common goal in your time together is something we should always be be doing. So we're going to get into that. And like Gian said, you're going to see three different roles today, lean team player, collaborative industry innovator, and project planner. And these all work together seamlessly on the 3D Experience platform to, well, keep everyone on, this, on the same page. And we'll get to that at the end of the demonstration and, and how we're going to follow up. So the demo we're going to see today, I'm so excited to share this with you. It's uh, about a 30-minute story about how Megan, the manager, is going to lead her team through a brainstorming problem-solving meeting. So she's responsible for her, her engineering team, some designers, some analysts, as well as coordinating cross-functionally with folks like Sam on the shop floor and Ben Business, who's the business unit owner. So we'll be going through this story with, with her as we get going. But first, you know, take a step back, Gian. You know, you nailed it. There's good, there's bad, there's ugly of team meetings. You know, a year ago, 16 months ago, we were having a lot more in-person meetings. It's great to see you guys back in the office, you know, getting back, using our studio and all the Waltham facilities. Um, but even when we're together in the same room, there's inevitably inevitably distractions, you know, especially if the meeting isn't run in, in the best way. You know, for example, have you ever sat in a meeting and it's much more like one person to many, just kind of the boss is like lecturing us the whole time and we're all sitting there absorbing it. Like, okay, are we gonna participate? Um, so we gotta run the meeting the right way. We gotta minimize distractions and this valuable time, like this valuable 49 minutes we have left together, we gotta make sure that we're accomplishing what we set out to do. So of course, bring in virtual, bring in you know the pandemic and the fact is now we're all working from home and getting back into the offices, but still at home, there's any number of distractions for people to, to tune out. So not only are people like not listening to Megan or our boss, you know, they're, they're not even focusing actively to contribute to the conversation. So that's a big thing. We can't waste time. We got to make the most of our, our time together. So how can 3D experience help? Well, that's what we're going to see today in this, in this demonstration. It's not a panacea because ultimately it comes back to Megan having good behaviors and understanding what it takes to prepare, facilitate, and then follow up uh, the meeting. So I'm really excited because this tool set we're gonna show you works on any, de any device. So whether I am you know, on my desktop or I'm on my, my iPad here, I can access all these tools, whether it's my lean board and my sticky notes, my collaborative task to-do list, or my project plan, my schedule, my burn down, and everything like that. So I hope you guys en enjoy the demo and really see how we can lead better meetings using Lean Team Player. I figure, though, before we get into the demo, you know, we'll see that. We'll enjoy it. I want to jump over to Lean Team Player. John, Gian, guys, I've invited you both to my board. Uh, I can see down here with the green light. You guys have joined in. Thank you. So I know everyone's yeah. present. You guys are on the ball. Oh, yeah. We're Let's already... customize this thing real quick. You know, like like Gian said, it's kind of like a whiteboard. You can absolutely think of it as, as a whiteboard. In fact, there's a bunch of templates that we can use uh, that Gian and John are instantly going to see. For example, I made a little template. I added it to my library uh, for what we're going to do uh, with today's brainstorming, bringing in this, this image. So uh, let's bring that in <clears throat> to our board. Uh, sorry, one sec. Documents, sketches, template. Yep, let's bring that in. Um, so you can bring in any kind of images. We can also bring in shapes and start to build a board on the fly. You know, so for example, if we're like, hey, let's talk about the good of team meetings. Let's talk about the bad of team meetings. I'm creating these things called swim lanes, which we'll be able to organize our notes and our thoughts around. So you guys should be in the board. Can you guys uh, see what I got going on here? Yeah, so far so yeah. good. 
Okay, so why don't we do this? Let's uh, let's send these to the background. Kind of built this board on the fly, and let's go to our front and let's talk about good bad. What have we seen, guys? John, yeah. John, what I'm have you seeing, seen? seeing a lot of interaction I in the mean, chat I... for sure. Oh yeah, the first one south yeah. the south TTM, Brad. Yeah, this is this is a big one for me. When it's the old this meeting could have been an email. That is just the worst. <laughs> yeah, um, that never a fun part. So this should have been an email. Uh, yeah. And one thing I like is, you know, you got to understand as a team leader, as a meeting facilitator, this book does a good job, right? It, right in the way, in the beginning, it's like, hey, there's different types of meetings. There's a status update, you know, like a project briefing or, you know, personal progress. And there's brainstorming meetings. There's problem solving meetings. So you got to understand, first of all, what type of meeting you have, you're going to have. In the context today, we're going to look at a brainstorming, problem-solving meeting in the product development uh, context. Uh, Gian, what'd you add there? No, no agenda or call to action. Yeah, that's from uh, Andy Rammer, who just who just mentioned yeah, that, yeah. and he says the worst. Yeah, the worst. I totally agree. Do you ever show up for a meeting and it's just like, uh, so you guys want to get going, or who right. wants to kick things off? <laughs> Why am I here? So let's put this in the bad here. We'll uh, or constructive room for improvement. So what's a good behavior? What have you guys seen that that's a good leadership behavior or, or a good good tool? Um, I would say a clearly defined goal for the meeting that everyone is, you know, on board with and understands. Oh, BG to it, Brian. No, no, you got it. I, I would I would expand that. I'd say ideal outcome. Like, what do we really need to leave this meeting having understood? And that'll come up again in the follow up. It's like we have the best brainstorming in the world, but like. Do you guys know exactly what you all need to do when we leave this meeting and who's going to help you do it and what timeline it is? What, your, what are your dependencies on all your tasks? Right. Yeah. Meeting yeah. on time. Yeah. Starting and ending on time. It's always important. Be respectful of, of what everybody else has going on before and after. I'm the worst at this, but staying focused on our agenda <laughs> helps me a lot because I like to talk uh, as we're doing now and, and, a lot of people do. In fact, one one damaging behavior you can see sometimes is one or two people dominating the conversation in a meeting. And it's like, OK, should you guys just go get a meeting room? And, we'll, you know, everyone's just kind of sitting back absorbing it. So, you know, one thing I really like about Lean Team Player, it gives a chance to everyone, everyone be on kind of an equal page, if you will, and contribute to the to the meeting. Um, yeah, got a, John, you got another one? Yeah, I got another one from uh, Mr. Banks. Just put this in here. Uh, he says individual updates that are already in emails or dashboards. So basically when you're going around the horn and it takes 45 minutes for everybody to say what's going on, when could easily just be a quick note or an email or, you know, put somewhere else. All right. I'm gonna throw one more on the, uh, the up, And this is kind of on the borderline because this is where Megan is going to sink or swim. It's like, okay, we're going to have a great meeting, but then who's going to do what, what are the action items and when are they going to be done? And in what order, uh, so good. Keep got, John and John, you guys are in the board right now. You guys can see it's pretty cool, simultaneous. So you guys, if you get stuff in the chat, keep it coming. Good, bad, ugly. John, John, you guys want to uh, keep it, keep it, keep populating this, and maybe I'll flip over and we'll take a look at Megan's uh, demo. Sound good? Sounds good. Yeah, let's let's see it. Okay, so think about a team meeting. We we usually concentrate on that calendar invite, right? It's that sixty minutes where we're together. In Megan's case, it's fifteen minutes. She's going to do a stand up style meeting. Um, but you know the meeting starts before then, the preparation. What are you doing to prepare? Bad meetings happen to good people. They break it into, or the author uh, Lee breaks into the three phases: preparing, meeting, and and follow up. What's nice is you just jump to the end here, preparing for the meeting checklist. Have you prepared everyone? Have you set an agenda? Have you uh, created background and supporting materials? Do you know who's going to be in your meeting? Have you pre-wired your meeting? And this one ages this book a little bit. Other than that, it's pretty you know, true today, but make printouts early. So we're going to shoe printouts here. We're going to be conservative. We're not going to waste paper. Plus we're all digital anyway. I'm not going to mail everyone the agenda. So let's see how we can prepare for the meeting um, a little bit better using, using Lean Team Player. Now, if you think about it, do we need another collaboration tool? If you guys have been watching John and Gian in this, this webinar series all year, we talk a lot about communities, uh, swim communities on the 3D Experience platform. And these are great for asynchronous communication. You know, let's say there's a potential design issue or something that Megan wants to bring up with her design team as we get into the product development story here. Uh, you know, she can post this on her community. But, you know, what happens if no one participates or she doesn't get the ideas that she wants? You know, this is where you might want to call a meeting 
and get everyone together for basically force them to focus on the one challenge at hand. So let's see how she can take about five minutes to real time prepare for this meeting in between calls or right before this call. Cause it's not hard at all. This is going to start from scratch. Let's create a new board and think of a board as a, a group of people or a certain purposeful meeting point. In this case, this is going to be Megan's structures team and the extended stakeholders. So what you're seeing here is kind of the blank canvas. And inside of Lean Team Player, there's different Lean Jets. You can think of these as widgets that populate this grid that I'm going to lay out my visual framework. And there's different widgets that are purpose built. I can load web pages, load videos. I can define who's going to be in the meeting. We can load pictures. We can load PDFs. And of course, since we're on the 3D Experience platform connected to my SolidWorks, I can load in CAD data and view that in 3D Play. So we're going to look in the demo about how we use each of these. And maybe I'll show you a little bit more about how we can um, customize each of these. Because now Megan is going to set up some of the specific content in each of these widgets so she can, she can have the me uh, meeting. First of all, define who can see the board. And since these, these folks, they're already on the platform, I've already given them access to the Lean Team Player role. I can add that. I can even link to other boards, like Sam, who's using it on the shop floor for his quality team. We can link to his board and actually cascade notes and actions over to him. So we've defined who's going to be there. Let's go into the web page reader. You, you can put any external URL. I'm actually going to use this to link over to that swim community because I want to bring that up in the beginning of my meeting to make sure everyone's on the same page. Like, why are we here? Well, let's take a look at this swim post that no one commented on. Thank you. <laughs> uh, videos. We can play a video. In fact, in this case, maybe Megan wants to kind of amp the excitement up or well, bring everyone into the same page of like, why are we here? Well, we just had some new field testing. We have some new FEA data. Adam Analyst, uh, a couple months ago, had done an, an initial stress report, aka Michael Steves. Thanks for doing this in, in Simulia. Um, so let's take a look at the stress report together. So I'm kind of setting up my exhibits, if you will, right? Kind of like making a PowerPoint deck, but obviously this is a ton better than a PowerPoint deck because all these rich media. Uh, for example, here's the latest revision of the Moto Knee Foot, right? It's directly from my collaborative space. Let's view that as part of the meeting. Sketch and picture viewer, I'm not gonna do too much yet. I, I, I'll show you a little bit of this, this sketch here. So Gian, you mentioned lean principles and there's a ton of lean frameworks that I'm sure a lot of us are familiar with. Uh, things like the Ishikawa or fishbone diagram when you're trying to do a root cause analysis. And these are, these are pictures, but more importantly, they're the frameworks that I'm gonna use to organize my team and, and walk them through the thought process I want them to have as we look at Okay, did we have a failure? Uh, why? And then more importantly, what are we going to do next to make sure that doesn't happen again? All right, so my meeting board is set up. It's literally that fast. I'm going to share this tab as a way to connect to my team. I'm going to head over to my swim community. I'm going to let the team know, hey, guys, we're having a meeting, and here's the link to the board. Everyone uh, s sign in, in in five minutes. So pretty cool. The last thing I do before I like uh, I execute the meeting is we're going to set the agenda. And this is where the timing really helps. And again, if you're staring down a 15 minute countdown clock, you're going to drive a little bit more efficient meeting. So I've set my time. You can see on the bottom left there at 15 minutes and I've set up the order in which we're going to click through. And this, this is going to be really cool. And we get everyone into the meeting. You'll see how setting up this agenda helps drive that that focus. Okay, so what do we do in five minutes? Well, we prepared for the meeting. You know, I didn't just send out an email with some bullet points, although that's nice. I appreciate when someone does that uh, or updates the calendar invite with an agenda. I mean, no, I've set up an, an entirely interactive experience in which everyone can jump in and really solve the issue at hand. So engaging board, visual agenda, awesome work, Megan. So let's go back over here. I mean, you think about preparing for our meeting. Did we accomplish anything? What do you guys think? I would give myself a green thumb for we have an agenda. Well, yeah. we will have some call to action. I'm going to move this over here because what is the the call to action? What's next? We'll touch on that in the follow up. Um, yeah. What else? What did you guys see? Um, well, we definitely saw some more come in outside of just the prepare, like turning ideas into actionable tasks was was a new one as well as oh, active participation when needed. But yeah, those are over in the meet phase. Yeah, we got our ideal outcome, our yeah. defined goal. Oh, yeah, that's cool. that's such a, such an important one. I like that a lot is coming up for the follow up because I think that's where a lot of people drop the ball. You see people and we have a ton in our company. They're, they're great at facilitating that meeting, keeping everyone on, on task and great. 
I don't want to steal it. But you get to the follow up, and it's like all those ideas we talked about. Who's going to do what? When? How are we going to actually achieve what, what we talked about? We got it. You have to do that, and that's going right. to be kind of the the climax here is when we get from our meeting to the follow up. That's where Megan is. Well, she's gonna she's gonna sink or swim. <laughs> sink or swim. Um, <laughs> it, sink or swim. No pun intended. So, anything else come up you guys want to talk about, or should we go on with the story? Uh, I think that's pretty much it. So, yeah. we're excited to see what's next. Moving. Okay. All right. So, clearly defined goal. We haven't done that yet. I'm gonna do that when I kick off the meeting, or sorry, when Megan does, and then active activate the participation. Why am I here? Yeah. Let's take let's take a look at this. So, meeting. We're gonna call the team to order. I'm getting. I got my my stakeholders. I got my team. And really, why do we bring this diverse group together? Because we want everyone's input. Everyone's going to have a different lens when it comes to solving or trying to determine the root cause or the next steps. So the most important thing, like we talked about, is I don't just want Eric Engineer talking about it because it's like a design uh, a brainstorm. I want everyone's everyone's contribution. So let's see how Lean Team Player can enable that. I play the meeting. All right. When I play the meeting, everyone's going to join in. And like you saw, John and Gian turns green when they they log in from their end. And then I'm using this agenda. Everyone's looking at it on the left side. And let's take the team through. Hey, why are we here? Guys, why are we here? Hey, a couple weeks ago, I posted on our community that there might be potential issue with the deformation of that pin. And I know we're all busy. I, you know, I wanted to make sure we got together at the same time to drive this brainstorming and not just rely on this, this community. But I think we all read this post. I see 17 people saw it. I got one like, thanks. You know, so why is this more important now? Well, we just got from the field, Monster Mike Schultz was out doing some testing with the latest revision, and everyone has not been out to see Mike in the field. This guy is a freaking beast. You know, he's gold medal, uh, X Games athlete, and he lost his leg, and so he started this company. Um, I don't know, out of character, I don't know if you guys have have seen this. This is this is so cool. So this whole time, that's the BioDap. That's this product we're talking about on his left leg there that he lost during a, a, a snowmobiling event. And you can see here, it's pretty extreme loading. You think about the the abuse cases, the use cases, the critical loading. Um, events are getting more extreme. Everyone's pushing the envelope. And Mike in, is getting more and more uh, riders and, and extreme athletes to use this. So just to give everyone the context of why we're here and why we need to make sure that we make uh, this design as safe as possible without getting too heavy. Um, I also have the PDF set up here. Thank you, Adam Analyst, Mike Steves, for doing this for me. So let's review the PDF together. You know, we can see the area of interest is this bottom uh, pin. And taking a look at the results, you know, initially we looked at this displacement. It was well within spec. Although look at the symmetry in those sim results. Is it really symmetrical loading? I think that might be part of the issue we're seeing. You know, as we look through uh, some of the other results that Adam put into his report, you know, let's take a look at the factor of safety. And, you know, Mike really wants a factor of safety between one and a half and two. Push the envelope, but not too far. And you can see in the pin, uh, due to the high stress, we do have a factor of safety a little bit below his new goal. Uh, why is that? Well, I mean, we can all see here there's shear stress, there's bending, there's contact pressure. And that's just this downward force. And I think maybe we need to reevaluate that. But we can see that the stress report did indeed indicate there might be potential active yielding. So now we're all up to speed on what that stress report showed. Um, not everyone has seen the latest revision of the CAD data, Ben Business, you know, uh, Sam Shop. You guys probably haven't seen the top level assembly of the Moto Knee. This is the, uh, the SolidWorks data from the latest revision. And let's just explore this a little bit. Let's explode it. Let's navigate and just make sure we all understand what are the components? What's the assembly look like? What are the interactions? And how can we possibly make this better? I know we all like this initially because of the simplicity, but the loading, the extreme events, we might need to do more. In fact, we might need to accommodate or account for an external loading, you know, like an explicit time-based shock from the side. There's definitely some bending, twisting going on uh, that that's between the knee and the foot peg on the bike. So we need to make sure we account for that and also what other loads are going on. So here I'm using uh, just out of character. If you guys haven't seen this, this is cool. This is a 3D markup uh, or, or a markup on top of the 3D play. And then in the context of this lean meeting, we can draw on it. We can do that and then take a snapshot of what we have. So this is this is this is the best part. I love this. So we took a snapshot. But so far, I've just been talking. Now it's time to get the team involved. We've got them up to speed. We have 10 minutes left in the meeting. All right, so here's where the sticky notes that you guys have seen come in handy. And like you guys saw, John and Gian, when they log in, they can use it. Um, 
what I'm going to do is kind of do a quick in in roll narration of the brainstorm, and then I've I've sped this up, so we're not going to sit through real time. But you know, Megan's going to start off by maybe creating a problem note that indicates why we're here. Hey, potential excess deformation, potential yielding, and then of course new field data that might support the need for a design change. So let's set up that up that up as a problem and see what other kind of ideas. So let's get the team together. They can all you know log in from their their own devices. I wouldn't use a phone for this. It's a little bit small, but Here's the tablet of my finished brainstorm. It's that's pretty cool. Or on their laptops, their phones, or their uh, uh, Chromebooks, things like that. All right. So Adam Analyst, he's got some ideas. Hey, let's validate the FEA with that strain gauge data. Do we need to do some time-based analysis? Let's make sure sure we're, we're reevaluating those critical load conditions, magnitudes, directions. Design and engineering. Eric's got some ideas. He's throwing on the board here. Check the drawings against the stock. Inspect and document any wear that we have seen. And of course, validate: Are we using the right material for that pin? Uh, ben Business coming out. Set up a community to interview users. Make sure we're seeing if there's issues. Interview VIPs and also be looking ahead. If we're going to make a design change, let's look ahead a couple seasons. Yep, great engineer. You know that spurred some ideas. We got to make sure we're increasing the loading capacity, evaluating costs, and making sure we're meeting that factor of safety uh, requirement. Sam Shop, great ideas. Yeah, let's look at the assembly procedures. Is it consistent how we're assembling this and torquing it together? Is the manufacturer of the pin using consistent methods? Let's look at the stock. Uh, Adam Analyst coming in. Yeah, let's let's optimize. Let's lightweight. Let's recheck these. Let's recheck these analyses. Let's take a look at a phase two plan. Oh, Sam Shop coming in with some more ideas. Double validate the part number, calibrate torque wrenches, look at the assembly guidelines, validate the program for the CNC for the side plates that we're cutting in-house. Ben Business getting, you know, kind of creative here. Market footprint, use case variance analysis. Um, it goes on and on, you know. So, so, Gian, yeah, give me give me a chance to breathe. What are you thinking? Oh, this is endless, endless ideas. And <laughs> I mean, it's it's I really like that you can actually organize them, too. That you can you're using these different color codings that it looks like you've you've actually like defined what what each color means too right well check this out so I don't know if you're like me so before we use this tool literally I managed our team with with these colored sticky notes you know different colors meant different things to me what we what I've done here is set up by functional group what the colors are so you can easily see project management is the blue design engineering is yellow our simulation team is is uh, green etc so you can customize that to whatever your standard is. And that might change per board. So you can customize it per board. Um, and what's cool, again, and this is one thing, you know, set the tool aside. One thing I like that we've done in our team meeting is, you know, we have what, 10 people on our team. So we used to spend I don't, an hour, I'm ashamed to say, doing an around the horn update. Um, hey, John, what's up with you? What are you working on this week? What's top of mind? John, you go around. Now the All idea right. here is like, everyone's logged in simultaneously. And you, what you do is you say, hey guys, Let's take five minutes and just put your ideas on the board uh, or adjust ideas that have been there from last week, update them, take them off if they're completed, but simultaneous brainstorming and contribution of ideas versus that linear, you know, sequential, let's go around and hear from A, B, C, D. So in five minutes, you think about this went pretty fast, but everyone's joined in and you just kind of let them brainstorm and go. Pretty cool, right? right? A lot of ideas on the table. It is cool. And it's almost, I like it a lot better too, because the around the horn, sometimes you don't always have something new to talk about, but you might feel compelled to still say something because you don't want to be that guy who's just like, yep, I, I, I'm, I'm doing my job. You, yep. you can skip me. So it's, it's, I like it better now that, you know, if you have something that changed that you want to let the team know you can, but if not, you don't have to. And the discussion kind of flows as necessary. Yeah. And, and this is something that, you know, th this this book brings up a lot, you know, facilitating the meeting is the meat of this. But, you know, take notes, uh, facilitate the discussion, follow the agenda, uh, capture action items. We're going to get into that. Identify next steps end on time. You know, you can guys can see the timer in the top left. Again, I fast forwarded. But, you know, that's what I, I would challenge you all to do. Next time you have a meeting, you want to get updates from everyone. Just say, hey, five minutes, everyone jump into this board or go up to the whiteboard and, and put a note up there. Or heck, you know, you're in a, a Google Doc. Hey, just everyone take a take a second and, and update the Google Doc what you're on. And then we can spend the next five minutes like talking about these ideas, organizing them, um, triaging them, if you will. That's where, you know, these other tools come in handy. So, for example, let's say we want to assign. OK, who's going to do each of these as, as we move forward? Well, each of the team members, you can kind of bring out as these little tokens or stickers. 
In fact, we have a new enhancement in the last FD where it can automatically assign whoever creates the post-it note uh, to that, that person, which, well, there's good and bad there, depending on the, the dynamic. Now, what's cool is like, so we, you, John, you mentioned this really well. This came from, you know, Delmia, our, our sister brand, who's really got some amazing um, CNC tools, process planning tools, like they live and breathe manufacturing. Right. So Sam's shop, who's on our platform, he's already been using Delmia and he has a board shop quality that he uses for his uh, daily standup. So we can take some of these notes and we can cascade them over to his board by assigning it. And then these will show up in his action log next time he opens uh, his board. So things that are just not in the scope of this team, we won't be able to touch on like calibrating torque wrenches. You know, we can we can just uh, send that to their team. There's also stickers and these are fun. Um, I, I, I <laughs> We all know stickers are fun. I have a two year old daughter. She loves stickers, sticking them on everything. We were like, no, not the vintage furniture. Don't stick them there. <laughs> but here, here you can use stickers to communicate more visually uh, certain things. And you'd want to come up with your team conventions. You know, what does the exclamation point mean? That's critical. Uh, what does P1 mean? Top priority. So we can start to, as a team, discuss what do you guys think about these ideas? Are they good, bad, thumbs up, thumbs down? Are they top priority? And right here, you think about this would be a cool place to just, you could stop the meeting. And you think about how many meetings have you been in where uh, some per one person takes a, a snapshot of the whiteboard, sends that out in an email afterward, like, hey, guys, here's our notes. Uh, basically, good luck following up on everything. <laughs> but I would say that, that that's already going above and beyond, isn't it, when you see people send out the uh, a picture of the, the notes. Um, right. So we could stop there, take a picture of this and send it out. But I want to go I want to go further. Now, we're running short, uh, short on time, but. This is where we, we can really make sure that the team is activated to act on all these great ideas so we can actually evolve and, and create this, this innovation. Because now it's up to each of these, these team members to work together and work individually to, to accomplish all this bold ambition we just brainstormed, right? The idea is 1%, execution is uh, 99%. So this is an action log. What an action log does is it, what does it do? How do you say it? It assembles, it consolidates, maybe is the best word any action notes from across your whole board, uh, not just this one sketch, but if we had used other other lean jets. And we can kind of do a quick laying out in terms of what needs to be done today, tomorrow, this week, and next week. All right, so you think about using this as a, as a stand-up tool like we do for our weekly uh, team meetings. Pretty neat, right? It sets the expectation. When are you going to be done? We come back to this next week. Do we move these things across the finish line? And you can kind of uh, use this as as that focal point for uh, next week. All right, I'm going to clean things up a little bit. I use the auto arrange, but I'm going to just kind of nudge these a little bit so we can see everything. And again, I can use the built-in tool to take a snapshot. Um, I could send this out in an email or post it to the team. And I think, again, that would still be running a good meeting, but it's not quite the follow-up that I want. Oh, there we go. We'll make a snapshot because I think some people do like this visual reference. So what I like to do is take a snapshot after every week, put it in the swim community. Right. Make sure people can re-reference -re this if they're not inside of the the lean team player. Um, now we're short on time, and we don't really have time to get into a full root cause analysis. I did want to show this a little bit. This is the sketch lean jet, where you can you can think of it as like an infinite canvas. You can bring on any type of different graphical frameworks. We mentioned Ishikawa. I got a starfish diagram, and let's say we have some extra time, uh, and everyone's super engaged. Let's get into what what could have been the root cause of why we're at this stage of a potential uh, design, not failure, but, you know, yielding, overstressing. We, we, we definitely want to be under our factor of safety goal. So you can use some of these graphical frameworks to further guide the team in their discussion. I like the starfish diagram because you think about, you know, all this discussion is great, but how am I thinking about the team being better next time? You know, the next design project we get, we got to think about what, we're, what are we going to do more of, less of, keep doing, stop doing. Um, so again, these are these are nice. These are out of the box uh, sketch templates that illustrate lean frameworks to help you make the most of this this time together. Of course, I'm way over time. Everyone's already left. You know, Megan's kind of now on on her own, just like finishing this up. What do you guys think? I mean, we use yeah. this in our our weekly team meeting. I mean, have you guys enjoyed using this versus the old method, which I think was more someone takes notes in a Word doc and emails it out afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. This is definitely a much more elegant solution. Yeah. I think um, so. I think we have a question for you, Brian, from sure. the chat. Uh, okay. So Brad was just asking how you could, in, like, what would you do to incorporate 
persistent info that the team might want to be able to reference at any at any point in time, like policies, yeah. company handbook, other shared docs. You know, what what would that look like? How would how would you tackle that? Yeah, I think think of the board. So you guys saw there's and I'll switch over to the, the lean jet so you can see there's different lean jets. So if you had a web page reader, you know, you could bring in a, a link to any external URL. Um, right. A PDF, things like that. KPIs, you can connect to your data sources. Those work, those work, but I, I would say, is that information only for the benefit of, of this board, this specific team get together? Uh, maybe you saw in Megan's case, she put together very specific visuals, exhibits to, to guide the team. You can also use dashboards. So your dashboard, you might include, you know, let's say you want to have a, uh, a a dashboard tab that is, you know, policies. And then take advantage of some of the other apps that come along for the ride when you have the platform, you know, things like web page reader. Uh, you know, there, there's so many things here, a web page reader, metrics reader, media links, you know, you guys have done a good job illustrating a lot of these in the last six months of your web series, but you can use these to maybe make something that's a little bit more uh, universal. And then with my team, you know, you can share this whole dashboard, you know, so it really depends on should that information live in the context of the meeting or should it live in the context of a, a dashboard, which is a little bit more, I guess, uh, permanent, you know, a little bit more, more broad. So hopefully yeah. that, that helps address a little bit. It just yeah. depends on what kind of information you're accessing uh, when. But dashboards are really helpful to display, yeah, a little bit more. Yeah, I think that definitely answered the question. But yeah, let's let's jump in and, and see what we just covered in that section of the demo now. You know, I think it's fast forwarded, but the thing is stimulating the creativity by getting everyone involved simultaneously, I think, is, is a key part. And participation. I think that's the biggest thing you see in a poor meeting is you have 12 people together you know, you have few people participate and then those people who are most vocal are the ones who kind of end up becoming the consensus because no one else says anything. So I love this idea of like everyone meet, everyone do it together and then let's dis let's discuss, you know, or else we spend too much time on one idea instead of the bigger, bigger picture and really embracing that diversity that everyone has. But anyway, this tool is great to do that. Digital notes, stickies, lean frameworks out of the box. Everyone's coming together. You know, if you think about what, what we accomplished over here, let's bring up our stickers. I would say meeting on time, absolutely. Agenda's in your face. Timer's counting down. Uh, it's right inside the canvas on purpose, right? Because that, right. that provokes us. Face-to-face, uh, -face, well, I can't solve that one for you, Gian. But. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was one from Jeremy. who's just saying how a face-to-face -face meeting can really help tell uh, more of the story that you want to convey when they can, yes. when everybody can see your body language and, and you know, just be there sad. in person. But <laughs> sad. I can't, but I, I can't, I can't see you guys right now. But hopefully, you're you're smiling <laughs> someday. <laughs> Wasting well, your also... time when you're together. Again, I mentioned that uh, individual updates. Why am I here? I think Megan did a good job having that board set up. This should have been an email. Well, it can't because that's you know, email is not forcing your team to focus on the task at hand. Uh, one or two people dominating. Yeah, Sorry, just John, I cut you off. What else did you say? Oh, no problem. I was just saying, I just added this one over here. Uh, I added a green thumb to that too, because uh, okay. yeah, we definitely have active participation when needed that you were just going over about how everybody can add their own ideas simultaneously and nobody really has to, it doesn't have to be dominated by just a couple people. Again, that's that's the biggest takeaway aha moment, because I think using this tool has made us all as a, as a team better at it. And you got to get away from that around the horn update. There's no reason. There's just no reason to do that. You know, everyone can update the board um, or, you know, to Brad's point, maybe every, um, you could use a dashboard and everyone could have a tab where they're updating. It's just like that's the cool thing about the platform as a source of truth. You know, we have these business collaboration apps and the CAD data is right there. That's literally my cloud-based data storage that we're saving everything to. So we're all rallying around that and making sure we're um, we're using this as, as a source of truth for a lot of things. Yeah, not just our, our CAD. All right, so. Yeah. I was gonna go on. Do you wanna, anything else on meeting you think uh, is worth talking? I don't think uh, there's anything else, so. Let's uh, see how we're going to finish this out.
happens. Uh, and that's always the risk. It wouldn't it wouldn't be that bad, but you probably would have maybe fits and starts. Like maybe Adam's going to jump on that new you know FEA analysis, and maybe Sam's going to do that thing. And you know we come back next week and we say, okay, where did everyone get to on this on this this plan? Because it's not really a plan yet, is it? It's a bunch of ideas in this this nascent state. But I think we all see the potential. All these great ideas, if we actually could come together and execute on these, oh my God, it would be the most amazing second revision ever. Uh, so that's Megan's job as the leader. You know, it's not just a matter of sending out the notes, sending out the picture, but following up. So here's how she does it using the 3D Experience platform. Again, first job, our first way to do it, take pictures, right? That's good. You can send those snapshots and post them. But here's the thing I really like is you can take these action notes and send them to what we call collaborative tasks. All right. And this is where the collaborative industry innovator role comes in because that's our to-do list, right? That is how I know what to do. So these tasks, you know, they've already assigned an owner. Um, they've already, we've already added some context to them. And then over in collaborative tasks, if you haven't seen it, it's, it's just like a Kanban board. It's a to-do list. What I'm going to do is now send every one of these notes to action items. I'm going to maybe take a little bit of time to add some details, uh, set the end date a little bit more specifically. So I'm going to take about five minutes to, to do this follow up. And that that's good. That's that's step one. Now everyone should have a list when they look at their collaborative tasks. Um, I'll show you what it looks like on the phone, by the way, because I use this to bring up my tasks. Um, of course, I close the app. That's fine. I'll bring a project planner real quick. This is what I really want to get to, though, is my project plan is not just seeing the list of tasks. And of course, everyone can see this when, when he or she logs into their board. But I want to be able to say this is when they're going to be due. It's in there. But also, here's the order in which I think we should do these tasks. I, I, I kind of want to get to a Gantt chart. And that's where a project planner uh, really is the tool you want to use. Because each of these tasks, I can then subsequently add them to a follow-up project plan. So what does this let me do? Well, it lets me sequence things and add a little bit more detail, like how much time do I think everyone is going to spend on this or that task? Uh, is it plus or minus a couple hours? And then I think most importantly is we can start to set up the dependencies. So if you think about this, you guys have probably seen project plans, right? Oh, yeah. But how often are they created from the ground up versus... One person, like the project manager, saying, hey, here's the chart. Everyone absorb this and, and go to work. <laughs> what, I, what I love about this is I'm going to make a project plan. Megan's going to make the project plan. But it's all the ideas the team had. I'm just maybe organizing the ideas, helping to sequence them, uh, put them in the right order, helping people understand the dependencies. Of course, what I can do, depending on um, what the task is, I could add additional context, attachments. Here, maybe for, for Adam, I want to make sure he's seen the latest revision. So right inside my task in Project Planner, I can add a reference over to the product itself, make sure he's working on the latest revision. Other deliverables, we can have conversations around each task. So you think about, okay, now all of a sudden it's becoming a lot more trackable, traceable, the progress and kind of the, the um, accomplishments along the way. So Project Planner is great. I also use it all the time when you get to this, this idea of, okay, now multiple people are doing things in parallel. There's going to be dependencies. Quick drag and drop in Project Planner. I can, I can start to sequence things. I like to also organize my tasks a little bit. You can drag and drop and reorder them. I'm going to reorder them by, by people so I can kind of help everyone understand at a glance. Here's your set of tasks we talked about, and here's the order and time I'd like you to spend on each of them. You know, and again, we're on the platform, so everyone who has a Project Planner role, we can add him or her to the project. And now they can come in here and update. They can move schedules around depending on the, you know, the rights that I give them. But here I want to empower everyone. Everyone's an author. You know, was I way off that that was going to take a half day? It needs two days. Great. Come in here and update the plan. Next time I come in there, I'll be able to see that update and adjust my expectations. So really cool. Uh, again, now what's my follow-up to the team? Sure. It's going to be some images. Let's go back to our swim community and maybe close out that thread. Hey guys, thanks for the meeting. Glad we got together. Here's a couple pictures of the lean boards. By the way, here's a link over to the project planner tab on my dashboard so you can see what, I, what I've laid out. Pretty cool, right? You think about that, it's like, oh man, all of a sudden I've been kind of told 
I've taken these ideas and now I've been guided. I've been nudged a little bit in terms of what does the boss expect me to do today, tomorrow, this week in terms of what we what we talked about. And by the way, what's everyone else doing and where are they at with it? So lean team player, awesome role on and of itself. But again, you embrace the power of, of the platform, 3D experience platform, and you have this digital continuity, traceability of tasks, items, and eventually even making a, a project plan where me as Megan, I can see the task burn down. I can see what, what's outstanding. And I can go to my boss and say, hey, listen, here's the, here's the plan. We, we had a great brainstorm session and here's what came out of it. All these ideas, by the way, I've taken the step to organize the team even further uh, by putting time and sequence to all this. So it feels like a lot of work, right? But you know, yeah. I, this is Megan Manager's job and she can accomplish all this Assuming she 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 has a good idea of like how much time these will take because she's she has that that referential experience, but you know I'm I'm thinking 15 minutes. So I cross faded a few times here, but 15 minutes to follow up, 15 minutes to do the meeting, five minutes to prep. I mean I think this is this is such a such a cool tool. Not not every meeting would warrant you know a project plan like this, but the possibility is there for the times where oh my gosh this is this is very very critical. We have to make sure that these tasks are follow up on and we reach that next revision, that next innovation in this product development. So you think about follow-up. I mean, has anyone ever said, uh, has anyone ever followed up with you to this level? Like, hey, I made tasks for you, you know, on your to-do list. I've also assigned a priority and some time. And by the way, guys, here's a, here's a project plan so we can see who's going to be working on which of these uh, when. Pretty cool, right? It, that is Definitely really makes cool. it easier. Talk, talk about organizing tasks, owners, timelines. Super cool. So let's go back over here. Stickers. I love this part. All these green stickers. Let's throw this one. Everyone leaving with a clear objective. Yes. Actionable tasks. Yes. Definitely a call to action. You got to have that. Oh, yeah. uh, who's going to do what? I already have. I don't have a bigger smile face, but I like this one. All right. Anything else uh, in the chat or any other good, bad we want to we want to discuss before I kind of wrap up the story for today? Yeah, I think we had uh, one more question, John. Did okay. you yeah, it's a suggestions on how to encourage team members to place notes prior to a meeting, prior to the meeting. I Makes like sense. that. Yeah. That, okay. So that's a good point. I, I, I'm not going to show our team meeting board, but you know, we we could probably do that more. I mean, it's as simple as here, John and Gian. You can see are in the meeting. They can go in any time and adjust things. I think that'd be just be a matter of establishing that as a norm of your team. Like, hey, guys, our meeting is at. 11 o'clock, um, maybe I send you a calendar invite for 1030. And in that invite, I send a link to the dashboard and I say, hey, uh, everyone take that first 30 minutes and update, move your notes through into the different swim lanes or put the stars on the ones that you want to do. That's how my boss runs his meeting, Mark. You know, if you're watching, I love how you do it. He's like, hey, guys, meeting's all about what you want to do. Uh, anything on the board you want to talk about? If not, like your time is back. So he kind of puts it on us to make the most of the time. And I think that that shifts the dynamic of the meeting, which is really what this is all about. Get out of that rut of how we always run things in a linear fashion and new tools, new ideas, but ultimately just being more productive. And I think that's kind of my, my conclusion of all this. So we prepared better, we, we facilitated a good meeting, we definitely followed up to a level of precision that I think a lot of people here that are engineers would, would appreciate. But what did we do? Boost focus of the team for that time, reduce waste, which by the way, Lean thinking. Oh, yeah. Tandy, I know you're here. You read this one. Um, I got to page one, but I kind of have been thought, I was thinking about this a lot. The first word in this whole book is Muda. And it sounds terrible, and it should, is what he says, because Muda means waste. So we think about lean, going back to the heritage of this tool. Lean is about reducing waste and a bunch of different drivers, of course, to waste. But I think we can all look at our day and say, where do we waste the most time? I think. Not all meetings are terrible. Some meetings are great, but do we waste time wondering what what was I supposed to do? What was my action item? What am I supposed to do next? Who's doing what? I think we do waste a lot of time tracking down um, just that awareness of what other people are working on. So reduce waste, maximize productivity. And one quote in this book that stuck with me because I think it rings rings true to the follow-up especially, but James Womack, uh, one of the co-authors here said, everyone involved must be able to understand and see every aspect of the operation and its status at all times. So again, think about that idea. The brainstorm that we had was great, but that's 1%. 99% is in our execution, the implementation, 
everyone needs to be able to see what's expected of me by when, what everyone else is doing. That's the only way we're going to get to that next milestone of our big design review of our next, our next revision. So anyway, I got to finish this book. That's my goal for maybe the long weekend or the holiday, July 4th holiday here in the States coming up. Um, I'm, ex- I'm excited about it. And again, it's all about rethinking what we're doing, the tools we use, the, the norms that we have. These three tools are available today for anyone out there on the 3D Experience platform. Lean Team Player, we saw Collaborative Industry Innovator, where we could have the to-do list and checkboxes. And then Project Planner, if you do want to you know, embrace project execution, bring everyone on board into the into the schedule and the uh, the project itself. So three good good roles available now. And of course, if you're new to 3D experience, you're using SolidWorks today thinking, well, what the heck is all this? It all starts with connecting your data. And you guys have talked really well about collaborative designer for SolidWorks, but you know, start by connecting your data. And then from there, it's kind of limitless what you can do with that with that platform as your your source of truth and well, your source of operations. So that's what I had planned. It looks like we have six minutes left. Um, are there any action items <laughs> that we need to uh, schedule? Or <laughs> you know, what's funny is what we actually didn't mention is uh, Mike Bucket said we start uh, meeting early, uh, ten minutes to con- uh, to play Connect Four and Lean Team Player and create notes. So <laughs> we forgot to mention the uh, the intense <laughs> Connect Four battles you can have. I. Yeah, that that well, yeah, you think about okay, you bring a tool like this on board, what's your first step? Well, you can you can go dictate to the team to log in or yeah, what we did is like, hey, you can make a graphical sketch for Connect 4, you know, the game where you line up your tokens. Um and say, "Hey guys, we're going to be trying a new tool in our meeting beforehand. Let's have coffee and uh, who wants to play Connect 4?" I think I finally beat Michael Steves last time. <laughs> uh he's on our team. He's uh yeah, he's pretty good, Jordan. He's all right too. So it it's 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 become a battle. Um, but it's fun. It certainly brings a new light, new energy to the meeting, and and again helps everyone rally around this tool as as the focal point, more than just like one person screen sharing and like taking notes or sharing a PowerPoint. You know, we got to move beyond that. That's so like thirty years ago, right? <laughs> that it is. Oh wait, you guys more. wouldn't even know. What am I saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's true. I don't really know what thirty years ago was like. <laughs> <laughs> it was dark and cold I... and nebulous. <laughs> Yeah, I can imagine. Oh, that's funny. Meetings were so much less productive. It was terrible. It must have been. <laughs> I mean, uh, but well, especially in the world of virtual meetings, you got to be rethinking it. If you're not rethinking how you're leading a virtual team with with tools like this and techniques like we talked about, you know, how are you ever going to get ahead? How, where's your competitive advantage, especially as a as a leader? So take it upon yourself. Take ownership of the meetings that you're in, and you know, help guide the crappy meetings you're in how they could be better. Give some constructive feedback, maybe. Um, on some of the things you learned today. So I'll let you guys uh, wrap up and then I'll jump in the chat and see if there's any other questions that I can tackle. Absolutely. Well, thank you Sounds so good. much, Brian, for uh, yeah, you're welcome, guys. for joining us and uh, for yeah. everybody in the audience as well. Uh, let's just do a quick recap here to uh, basically talk about what we covered. So obviously we were quick, uh, we quickly created these engaging agendas and these visual boards that Brian and Gian were talking about. And you know what? It really does stimulate your team's creative uh, energy, you know, simply by allowing everybody to be involved. And then what I really like is that there's no waste of time because you can go around and you can actually um, pick and choose the important uh, mentions that happen on those sticky notes. And then, of course, what's a meeting without good follow up? So we were able to organize actions, owners, and, and timelines with one single source of truth. So I think that in our short amount of time that we've had, we've not only had a lot of engagement from the chat, but we've accomplished a lot. So definitely want to uh, thank everybody for joining us today. And also would like to give a special shout out. Oh, um, before that, uh, let's uh, you can learn more by clicking the link in the description below. So if you saw anything that you're interested in today, definitely be sure to check that out. There is a link in the description. And now a special thank you to both Sarah Zuckerman and Mike Sandy. Without them today, we wouldn't be able to talk to you guys. Uh, They help us immensely uh, with the chat and being the bridge of communication between us and and you. So thank you guys so much. And if you enjoyed this session, you'll definitely be want to sure to check out next time on July 22nd, 2021, where our special guest, Lisa Costa, 
uh, we'll be covering uh, product versus file versus CAD file. So we're super excited about that one as well. If uh, you, I don't think Lisa's, Gian, I don't think Lisa's been on this one before, but if you remember from our old webinar series, Lisa was always one of our favorite special guests because she just brought so much energy with her presentation. Um, so I think oh, yeah. that'll be tons and tons of fun. You'll definitely be one of sure to uh, check that out. Also, uh, last but not least, I don't think we have a slide for this, but if uh, every every Thursday we have live content and next Thursday is actually live design. And uh, one of our favorites, Jordan Tadic, is actually going to be showing you uh, remodeling a home in SolidWorks. And that is on July 1st at 11 a.m. So you'll definitely want to be sure to check that one out, too. Wow. Um, a whole home. That's great. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> so yeah, thank you guys all so much for for tuning in. Uh, we I think we had an absolute blast today. Thanks so much for all of the, uh, the you know the the engagement in the chat. We really appreciate it. Thank you to Brian, and uh, we'll see you guys next time.